Today I'm rebuilding LSU and NCAA football and not stopping until we win a national championship because they've already lost twice this season, and it's been a real struggle ever since Joe Burrow left them. Brian Kelly is supposed to fix everything though, and I'll be starting this rebuild mid-season. We have seven games left on our schedule, and to stay on pace to win another natty, we need to complete these two objectives in year one. The four-team playoffs are probably out of reach, but next year I'll add the 12-team one while also putting Texas and Oklahoma in the SEC so we can keep this as realistic as possible. Honestly, as I scroll through this roster, it isn't great, but that's that's why we're using Fang's recruiting mod, because the best guy in this class is a 96 overall. When I scout him, there's a high chance it drops though, as you can see here. And with Fang's, dudes bust all the time, but you can also get some crazy gems like this one that was a plus 17. We need a quarterback though, and it's certainly not going to be Brandon Johnson. And I guess it could be Caleb Millard, as he's a 97 overall. Obviously, we are going to have to go all in on him, but it won't be easy because we're trailing by a lot of points. The good news is I found our future running back in Curtis Peters, because after scouting him, he has 98 speed and 99 spin move. All I can say this early into recruiting is so far this is the best class I've ever seen while using this mod, and I think that Florida will make for a good visit week. It's not going to be easy to beat the Gators, but we don't have a choice because we haven't landed a single commit and all of these guys are coming for this one game. Luckily, it is at Death Valley, and we won't have him next year, but Jaden Daniels is our quarterback, so we're going to be able to dominate with easy passes like this. Midway through the third quarter, we're going to hand this one off to Logan Diggs, and he is going to lose the football. That's terrible. I'm embarrassed to say that we're in a competitive football game with Graham Mertz, and on third and eight, we're going to tackle ETN, but we're still going to go down by two points, and I didn't think this would be the score at the end of the third quarter. I mean, we've been able to get into field goal range, but I don't want to get a field goal. I want a touchdown, and Jaden Daniels missed the throw. He played so much better against Ole Miss than what he's been doing today, but a win here is crucial for our rebuild, and on third and seven, we need to get the sack. Come on, there we go. If all goes right, all we need is a few first downs to end the game, but after Ray Davis annihilated this defense, they learned how to stop the run. As a Kentucky fan, it pumped me up. I love the win, but now we have to pick up this third 19 and there was never a chance. Literally so much is on the line and this punt is not going to pin them back. In fact, they're going to get past midfield, which is terrible. And I might try to send a blitz, but instead we're going to get burnt. Harris is not going to make the tackle and we might as well let him get in. This is really bad. They're going with the run and Graham Mertz is going to get it. So in one of the only important games for this season, we are struggling, but you know what? I think we might have Thomas Jr. He is toasted number eight and he's going down inside the 10. Brian is 6'4 and only a junior. So we're going to have him for at least one more season. Diggs gets to the one. And before we attempted to get in, I took down as much clock as I could. Now I'm going to run out even a little bit extra. That should be enough to send it to overtime. I don't think they're going to get any big gains on us, but Harris just got burnt by Douglas and he sheds the tackle. This is just, I literally have no words. How did we just give that up? I should have never thought that an LSU rebuild would be easy, but no way. Brian has burnt the corner again. Please be fast enough to make it to the end zone. No way. Come on. Come on, please just keep on going. Brian Thomas Jr. has done it two times in a row, and this is one of the craziest starts we've ever had to a rebuild. Obviously, we're headed to overtime, and there's only one player's direction that I'm looking in because Brian Thomas Jr. has been that guy. I just have to hope that he doesn't declare early for the NFL draft, but we still need to get a stop on Graham Mertz and the Gators, and something tells me these cornerbacks just stink. That leads me to believe it's probably just best if we run a cover two and they take the flat on third down, which means the Gators have to settle for three on their second drive, and we can win with a touch down. I'm going with the play action. Brian Thomas gets open on the corner route, but he unfortunately was not able to get a foot in here. So on third and 10, we're going with the slant to Lacey and he gets the first. It's stressful, but making sure a few of the prospects visiting commit is very important. And on first and goal, I'm expecting Logan Diggs to get in and that ends the longest first game I've ever had in one of my rebuilds. Brian Thomas Jr. obviously won player of the game and we weren't able to get players such as Caleb Miller to commit, but Brandon Barber, Brad Baldwin, King Oliver, and Curtis Peters all did. And that means we're going to have one of the best half backs ever, but I also just realized that Curtis Peters can play cornerback with 96 zone coverage. I think we'll have to use him on both sides of the ball, and since we still play Auburn and Alabama, our side of the SEC is winnable. We could actually make it to an SEC championship, but that would involve winning the rest of our games, and with about a minute and a half left, we are down by four at Missouri. I'm just going to roll around here with Jaden Daniels, maybe make a couple guys miss with a juke and get railed. It's probably best to slide in those situations, but we needed to get as many yards as we could, and Brian Thomas hasn't played amazing today. They've really keyed in on stopping him, but when Whenever we get one-on-one -on -one coverage, I'm going to take it. With about 40 seconds left, I mixed in a little bit of a play action. Not that that helps because they wouldn't have fallen for it. And I hate that I even threw that pass because I had to burn our final timeout, which could cause some issues in the future. Neighbors makes a couple miss though. And I know that he got rocked shortly after, but this was such a clean move. We just can't take a sack or something because that burned a lot of time. I'm going straight to Kyron Lacey who catches it. I don't appreciate having all these close finishes, but Brady Cook doesn't even get the Hail Mary off. And at five and two, our season's starting to turn around. Obviously, we already got multiple 85 
five plus recruits to sign. So the only objective left for this season is to get nine plus wins. And I think it'll be possible, but we do have two top five teams remaining on our schedule. At least there's also some easy ones like Army, but something can't be clicking right because it should not be this close with a minute remaining. I know Army's always really good on NCAA football for no reason, but these are the updated rosters. And there's no way that we can play like this against Alabama or Auburn because if we do, we're definitely gonna lose to them. I guess you could say a win's a win, but that made the 90 overall guard not wanna play for us and choose Georgia instead. Plus we have to take on number one Alabama who hasn't lost on this dynasty file. I made sure LSU schedule was as accurate and updated as I could, but I couldn't do the same for the Crimson Tide. So that's how they're still undefeated this season in NCAA football despite having a loss in real life. To be honest, they haven't played well at all, but with a few minutes left in the game, they've gotten it back within six and they're threatening to score, which would give them a one point lead if they're able to get into the end zone. But drops like that could be our saving grace. We really needed to catch a break there and we're gonna get the stop, but there's only about two minutes remaining. So it wouldn't make sense for them to not go for it. And of course they converted. A missed extra point might come back to bite us because we're trailing by one, but we only need a field goal. And I'm confident Brian Thomas Jr. will help us get that. We still have plenty of time remaining and on the corner route, he did not create any separation. So that's a little concerning, but I'm gonna give him a chance to do it again. And this time he gets about 15. This is a massive fourth and 10 though. And I burned a timeout to call this play. So I don't have any remaining. We are just gonna pick it up with Lacey. So our chance of making the SEC championship should stay alive because we're inside the 10. I'm not a big fan of all of our wins being so close, but at the end of the day, I gotta take it. And at this rate, we might actually be able to make it into the playoffs. We do have to take on Georgia State next though. And even though they're a Sunbelt team, they're seven and one this season. So they were able to keep it much tighter than I think most people would have expected. It all depends on the poll you look at, but even though the coaches one has us down at number nine, we are up to number five in the AP. And that got both Cody Henderson and Philip Mahone to commit to the team. Now we still haven't been able to convince Ronald Dowdy or Caleb Millard, but if we continue to play this well, there's no reason they shouldn't come here. And let's just make sure we finish out the season strong. I never enjoy playing in the rain, but at least we should be starting up 14 to zero on the Aggies. And in the end, we won by 21, so it wasn't even close. That's exactly how I expect us to play, but now we have to take on number 15 Auburn. And we're lucky Peyton Thorne tore his PCL. That should make this a much easier game, but maybe I'm wrong about that because so far Robbie Ashford's done a good job and we're lucky they called a legal touching there. I don't like going down 10 to zero early on, but it's better than giving up a second touchdown. And what on earth was this play? He just threw it and they still lose yards. So it was a negative 15 yard reception and it would be hilarious if their kicker was out of his range now, but he's not. All I can say is it's been a slow offensive day, but we need to get this fourth and inches. Jaden Daniels does that. And now we have a chance to actually get onto the board. We just have to score before the half and Hilton Jr. comes away with it. I think mixing in the read option could be a decent idea. Jaden Daniels has to get by two players and he just ran straight by them. They didn't even attempt to make a tackle. So that's a bit surprising, but I'll take it. And we should have gotten a sack there, but Ashford just stepped up in the pocket. And of course, Johnson broke one tackle and another one. Like expected, they ended that drive and the half with a touchdown. So we're in a bit of trouble. And pressing Malik neighbors is a bold decision. I don't know why Auburn thought they could do it. I've tried my hardest to keep up with them, but they just scored another touchdown and Robbie Ashford gets the two pointer. So we're going to need a big offensive drive and starting it off with a holding call is not exactly what we wanted. Stupid stuff like that could be the difference between us making the playoffs and not because now we're stuck on a third and 17 and I don't think any of these routes are going to get us where we need to. I'm going to have to roll out and float it up to Logan Diggs who is not able to hold on. So the smart decision seems to be to punt the ball back and hope we can get a stop. We're going to get a beautiful bounce on it and that's going to go all the way to about the 15. He picks it up and we're going to hit him. We just need to shoot the gap well a couple times and we have to watch that hit from our linebacker one more time. Sophomore Harold Perkins Jr. is a 92 overall. He's the best player on this team. He's already developed a ton this season. And on third and five, I'm going to go with some cover two. I am way out of sorts with my user though. They're going to go with the flat and that's a big hit. Our defense somehow forced a stop and that at least gives us a chance. You all always tell me I don't take my flats, so I'm going to do that here, but he runs out of bounds and that makes it fourth and two, but I don't think they're going to see the wide receiver screen coming. Come on, Logan Diggs, just fight. No, all they have to do is take a knee. I don't even know why they're running it. And that is a heartbreaking way to end our season. We still got nine wins, which means we're on pace to complete the rebuild, but Alabama won our division clinching a spot in the SEC championship and we didn't even have anybody in the Heisman running. Our only real award was Malik Neighbors winning the Jet which goes to the best returner in the country and Jaden Daniels stats don't look the best. He's graduating for sure but I'd like Logan Diggs to at least return and next year we need to be one of the teams that makes the playoffs. Making the Outback Bowl just won't mean much to us and with about 45 seconds left we are down by three so we are going to need to move it down the field and score a touchdown to win it. Brian Thomas Jr. makes the catch and he just doesn't want to go down. I accidentally had two clock on though so there's only 10 seconds left and that is going to be intercepted but I'm gonna blame the guy for blending into the end zone. Jaden Daniels ends his career with a loss and of all the seniors graduating he is by far our best one but what shocked me is the fact
fact that we have five different players transferring out. I know that we've picked up some decent gems in recruiting and we're not even done yet, but losing two young corners is gonna really hurt, and we have to somehow hope that I'm able to land all three of these guys. I need to see yellow text pop up, and there it is for all of them. So that is just enough to make sure that we get a top five class, and there are a lot of good players in here, but none of them compete with 97 overall Caleb Millard. We also have to figure out what to do with Curtis Peters, and he's only an 83 overall halfback, so we're gonna start him as a corner, but trust me, he's gonna play on offense as well, and for training results, we're just gonna go into it raw, where I see that Brian Thomas Jr. is our best player. It's a good thing we were able to recruit a quarterback, because with the SEC now looking like this, it just got even harder. On top of that, in real life, LSU decided they needed UCLA and USC also on their schedule, so it's gonna be very hard to make the playoffs, which is one of our season two goals, and if we're gonna continue to rebuild the school, the other one has to be signed an 88 plus recruit. The number one player in the country starts at a 92, but he drops to a 73, so it's a good thing we don't need much besides depth at halfback and some defensive positions. To our luck, I scouted another quarterback, and this guy ended up being a 96, so I don't know what's going on with Fang's recruiting mod, but we already have Caleb Millard. Also, in case we can't recruit a halfback, I'm redshirting Armani Goodwin, and that's because he'd be a third stringer behind Logan Diggs and Curtis Peters. With stats like these, I'm not sure how he only shows up as a 73 overall running back, but I'm so ready for our first game, even if we're projected to be the 17th best team, and in the SEC, that's not good as that puts us around mid-table. A lot of freshmen are about to make their debut, but the Trojans have the home field advantage, and here on 3rd and 12, Mario Williams is wide open. That's gonna put a lot of pressure on freshman Caleb Millard, who already completes a pass. And let me tell you something, this guy looks tiny, but he has a rocket of an arm. Also, now we're gonna see Curtis Peters, our cornerback and our halfback, in the game, and with his 98 speed, he's gonna gash it. I doubt these two freshmen will lead us to a championship this year, but maybe in the next three, and that is already an interception. Fortunately, Caleb Millard will bounce back from that, and it's not really his fault his tight end created almost no separation. And to end the first half, I'd love if we could get into field goal range. Brian Thomas can knock it open though, but I'll give him another chance, look in his direction this time, and see if he can catch the 50-50 ball, and he doesn't. They're trying to get us to beat him over the top with this defense, but we just need a few yards, and I'm hoping that was enough for our kicker to come out and drill it if it's far enough, which it is. That wasn't a terrible first half of football for our freshman quarterback, but unfortunately Curtis Peters is out with bruised ribs already, and that means we should probably lean on the pass even more. I think we're going to be able to roll out here and find Aaron Anderson for another touchdown, and going into the fourth quarter, we're still up by 14. USC would score a touchdown, though, and now they have us on a third and 19, where we really need a miracle. I might as well just see if Brian Thomas comes down with it, and he holds on to it. I think he dropped that ball, and then he held on to it, and if you watch an instant replay, you'll see him go up with it, it get tipped out of his hands, and then right back into it. I can't believe that this is our number one receiver over Malik Neighbors, but because of him, we should be able to wrap it up against USC. We just need a fourth down stop, and we get it. I think this is a pretty good debut stat line for the freshmen. And recruiting wise, we just got the highest upgrade for instant commit. So before I even scout them, I'm going to offer scholarships to every single player that has us as their number one school. It landed us these five guys, but there's a good chance that none of them end up being good. So I'm not sure if that was really worth it. And at least Luther Hill's a 75, but I'm telling you all, I got really lucky with that last recruiting class because this one only is two guys that are over an 89 overall. I'm going to schedule them for a visit against Texas. But before then, we have a few other SEC matchups and nothing can prepare us for what's coming next week. We're going to have to play on the road at number four, Oklahoma. So I'm cherishing this time in front of our home crowd and great blocking there, boys. On fourth and inches, the offensive line decided to let the quarterback get instantly sacked. And let's just say that it's a good thing Tennessee stinks. They barely moved the ball in the first quarter. And assuming they don't stop this, we're about to go up 14 to zero, which seems like it's just going to continue to get worse. But Curtis Peters is really struggling to get anything going. So we're going to have to go with the pass. And that was almost intercepted. Caleb Millard's only 5'11", so I guess we need to expect stuff like that to happen. And I'm content with going up by three possessions, but only because throughout the rest of the game, we were able to hold on to our lead and seal our second win of the season. It was honestly just a masterclass from Caleb Millard, and I hope he's ready for the biggest game of his career, but Oklahoma's coming off a loss to Arkansas, so that makes me a little less worried. Last year, they made the college football playoffs, and on fourth and four, we get the throw out to Aaron Anderson just in time. He is going to fight, and he is not going to make it to the end zone, but he's put Curtis Peters in a fantastic position. It's no longer Dylan Gabriel at the helm. It is now Jackson Arnold, and he's just taking it to the former Heisman winner who isn't going anywhere. Well, with a minute left in the third quarter, we're still up by 10 points on the Sooners, and I'm hoping they bite on this play action, but our quarterback has no clue which receiver is which until he completes the pass. If we can continue to perform like this, it could be a very long season for a lot of the teams we play, and it's nice to see Curtis Peters win player of the game. Now, if you're curious about recruiting, here's all the guys we're targeting, and it's only really good at the top of the board, but we don't really need Dwight White, and although Nick Darnold would be amazing, we're losing points on him weekly, and we're all the way down at fifth place. As long as we continue to climb the polls, though, we should be good because just jumping up to number six was enough
enough to get these four guys to commit, including Troy Carlson. I'm expecting us to just blow out Mississippi State, but the only reason we wouldn't is because we have to play on the road. And evidently that does not phase Caleb Millard as all because we're going up 28 to zero. After that moment, our offense kind of just chilled out and we ended up winning by 25. But with four touchdowns and zero picks, Caleb Millard continues to impress. And that's exactly what we need for this Texas game. They might have two losses already, but they've been against very good teams. And I cannot stress enough how loaded the SEC is this season. Even if we were to lose three games, you could probably argue we deserve a spot in the 12 team playoff. And I'm just waiting for our freshman quarterback to come back to life because he's been doing so well. It's a ballsy call early on, but I want to keep the pressure on Texas and we go with the fake field goal, which they weren't ready for. They had guys out there to stop it, but once we ran it, they just froze up. And on third and goal, I am going to look in the direction of Brian Thomas Jr. He's a great threat down in the red zone. And on this next drive, he's going to make a toe touch grab. But the real difference maker has been our defense who has held Quinn Ewers to zero points up to this point, And we're going to lay the hammer. But in the last three or four instances, whenever they've gotten in a third down situation, they've picked it up. So I'm really hoping on third and goal, we're able to hold them. They're going to go to Jonathan Brooks and we just need to stop him from fighting his way in. It might've looked like a close call, but his foot stepped out there. And I can't believe Texas is kicking a field goal. It almost feels like if we can find a way to get into the end zone, we could put this game away. And there's no way that man-to-man -man coverage was working. Brian Thomas Jr. is that guy. And Quinn Ewers should not have returned for another year of college football because we're destroying him. I mean, I don't know about you all, but I would not want to get tackled like this. And after throwing him around like a rag doll for a bit, we get to leave with the win. Brian Thomas Jr. was the player of the game with four touchdowns. And amidst all these new commits, I see the big name Dwight White, which means we've technically signed an 88 plus recruit. And as long as we make the playoffs, which seems likely, we're still on pace to win a championship in a few seasons. This one against Florida is going to be really tough though, but it helps that Graham Mertz is out for the game with back spasms because that means we're facing their second string quarterback and he has nowhere to go here. Unfortunately, Caleb Millard's also been struggling and we're finally moving down the field, which is a good thing. Malik Neighbors is going to make the catch and he did not just fumble that football. We were about to go up with a touchdown, but now we're about to just have to do it all over again. And on third and six, we're just going to take our little out route, which is not held on to. There's no excuses for not catching a ball that hits you right in the hands. And this game doesn't feel like LSU Florida. It feels like Iowa versus Nebraska. There's just been no offense. It's embarrassing, but I think we're going to finally get down the field. The safety is trying to play this ball, but Malik Neighbors doesn't care. What a perfect way for us to end the first half. But that's only if we actually get into the end zone. And this is going to be a tight throw that is not held on to. I guess I shouldn't even be surprised at this point, but hopefully our offense can pick it up in the second half. And that's what we've done is we're threatening to score another touchdown on the corner route. I can't get it off in time. So I got to give credit to this Florida defense for being so tough. But ours has been even better as they haven't scored a single point. And we're going to get another third down stop. Assuming we manage the clock right, this could be the last time that the Gators ever see the ball. Peters is already going to get us a first down. And it's kind of remarkable that with no turnovers, we've only been able to put up six points. But on this option, I waited so long to pitch it and we're doing well. I normally try to avoid running that much with Caleb Millard, but it seems like he's doing a decent job. So I'm going to continue to let him take the rock and it looks like he's going to get another first. All we need is to pick up this third and five and the Gators won't be able to stop the clock. You know that Peters will get that. And I can't believe we just won a game without scoring a single touchdown. We're continuing to get players to commit like Calvin Iusefa, but we're also the number one team in the country right now. And if we can keep this up, there's a chance this rebuild ends in year two. I really don't see us struggling against UCLA. And our defense has done a pretty good job because with about a minute remaining, we have a 21 point lead and we need to hold them. It wouldn't be the end of the world if they got into the end zone, but we don't want to give them any chances. And now we must recover this onside kick, which Curtis Peters does with these. And with his speed, I might as well try to return it for a touchdown, but I don't think he's going to make it. It's nice to be seven and know though. And it would be awesome if Caleb Millard could win the Heisman. As I look at the rest of our schedule though, there's still a couple of top 10 matchups. So a lot could still go wrong. And Brady Cook has come in here as a man on a mission. He led his team down the field to score a touchdown on their first drive, but we're going to tie it back up. And going into the half, I would love if we were up by at least seven points, but it seems like that might not happen because Missouri is down inside our red zone and they could very easily score a touchdown. Brady Cook is going to throw it off his back leg though. And at least for now, it's 14 to 10. Since then though, they haven't been able to put any more points up on the board as we've been clamping them up. And since we also scored a couple touchdowns, we have an 18 point lead, but that stiff arm was filthy. Someone bring him down. We cannot let them think they have any chance to come back. And after we got that huge fourth and three stop, they're not even calling their timeouts, which means they've realized they have no chance. The undefeated streak has stayed alive and Nichols State is just a freebie for us. By halftime, I doubt even half the stands will be full because it's already a blowout and we're hoping to make it 35 to zero here, which we do. This was honestly just a perfect chance for Caleb Miller to give him a better shot at winning the Heisman, and very few quarterbacks are going to put up stats as good as these. Up to this point, we've felt pretty much invincible, but our next two matchups
matchups are both top seven teams, and one of them also has a freshman quarterback that's in the Heisman race. Before we play him, though, we have to play Ole Miss, and so far it's gone pretty well for us. We've already put up 14, and we're about to score another touchdown, but since Logan Diggs couldn't get in, I'm gonna have to give this one to Curtis Peters instead. Our defense has definitely been a nightmare for Jackson Dart as well as we get another sack, so we're continuing to maintain our lead in the third quarter, and I'm not sure how Ole Miss is ranked fifth in the country because they just haven't been that good. We're gonna catch that, and I don't know why we threw this one to Aaron Anderson, but he just went up for the ball and was not dropping it. After giving up like 50 points to this offense the season before, this result feels so good, and what a performance from Caleb Millard. All we have to do is avoid losing to Texas A&M, but it's at Kyle Field, and this place is gonna be pumped up. I wanna get the Tigers back to the SEC Championship so bad, though, and we're giving up the third and five. We need to just make a tackle, and I need to keep in mind that we're facing a quarterback that's in the Heisman race, so it's not gonna be easy to stop them. Come on, boys. What are we doing? We cannot let them drive down the field like this on us, and on third and goal, we gotta hold them. That should've been picked. I mean, I'll gladly take them only getting a field goal, but this game means everything for us, and on fourth and two, there's a couple open receivers. I'm going with the farther pass, and of course, they knock it away. I don't know if they're gonna expect the fake punt or not, but I wanted to run it anyway, and Henderson might be fast enough to get it himself, but the ref is saying that he got tackled just short, and he's also laying on the ground injured. It's looking like a rough start for us, but on the wide receiver screen, King Oliver, the freshman cornerback we just recruited, intercepted Sam Walton, and I don't think anybody is going to catch him. What a play from the freshman. I mean, the turnaround we just had is remarkable. I'm telling you all, this defense is very special. He's trying to run. He didn't scramble. Why would he throw that? I'm certainly not complaining because we need to hold on to our four-point lead. I had someone open, though, and we've already tried to fake punt, so we might as well go for the fake field goal. They were not expecting it. Taylor is going to be able to dive into the end zone, and I'm hoping all of that momentum can carry us to a victory today. No one was expecting for us to go for it. Now Samson Jr. is getting a massive gain to open up this third quarter, and I cannot believe it, but he might make it all the way to the crib. It looks like the ref threw the flag for clipping, though, and that means we're going to have to work a little bit harder to reach the end zone, but I'm still confident we can do it. Logan Diggs has been a beast, and I've had to start him as our halfback with barely using Curtis Peters because he plays defense too, and that makes him really tired. For example, he's not even out there for this big third and seven because he needed a break, but they missed the pass, and it's hard to believe that Texas A&M's quarterback was ever in the Heisman race because he has looked terrible. They can buy as many recruits as they want, but it's not going to get them a win over us, and our only game left is against Arkansas. We just need to win it to finish the regular season as one of the two undefeated teams, and please tell me how Caleb Millard went down in the Heisman race while Sam Walton remained at number one. This guy's stats for a freshman are all right, but they're not Heisman worthy, and they're certainly nowhere near what Caleb Millard has been able to do. I will be incredibly salty if we don't win it, but I guess a championship would mean more than a Heisman trophy, and there's no way that Razorback fans thought they were actually going to come out and have a chance because you know who you root for. It's the same team that can have KJ Jefferson and Raheem Sanders and still not do a thing, so I will gladly take what's one of our biggest wins this year, and going into conference championship week, we're the number one team in the conference, and since Florida won their division, we'll be playing them again, but hopefully this time we can put up more than six points. Graham Mertz will be back for this matchup though, so that'll most likely make things more difficult. We've gotten him to a third and eight though, and he's gonna throw it up. There's two guys over there, and neither of them caught it. That's so unfortunate because Florida's already scored more points than they did last time, and I remember how tough it was to move the ball on this team. I think we're gonna have the crossing route though, if we get it off in time, and what a beautifully floated ball. I trust Caleb Miller to get it done when we need him to the most, but with a few minutes left in the second quarter, we've still only scored seven, and it looks like the Gators have made the mistake of pressing Brian Thomas. He's easily gonna get right by that cornerback, but we need to continue to get stops, and here on third and eight, I only sent two people, so it's not gonna be easy, but we get the user pick with Perkins Jr. That is now our junior linebacker that's the best player on the team, and he takes it back. We're playing against Graham Mertz, so I guess we should have expected something like that to happen sooner or later. He could have almost had another pick here, and it seems like right now we have the best linebacker in the country. With about three minutes left, we have a 17-point lead, but they faked us out, and they have all three of their timeouts, so it's not over, but at least we recovered the onside kick, because now we can lean on Curtis Peters, and going into the playoffs, I might start giving him more playing time because of how quick he is. I've tried to keep him healthy all year so he can be on the field for us, but now we're gonna have to start putting our best team out there on the field, and Aaron Anderson is going to make a somersault catch. It looks like our players are taunting the Gators while we celebrate, and Caleb Millard might win the Heisman with this performance, but the more important part is we took home the SEC championship. I honestly have no clue how Sam Walton won the Heisman, especially since Caleb Millard led the country in passing yards, and his touchdown to interception ratio was insane with 43 to 6. He even ended up rushing for a couple as well, but Curtis Peters is hurt, and this is exactly why I'd been limiting his touches. As for receiving, we had three guys with double-digit touchdown catches, and with these stats, linebacker Greg Penn III won the Bednarik and the Bookkiss. Left end Parrish 
Marchand only had five sacks, but he won the Lombardi. But Penn State's taking the number one spot in the playoffs away from us. We'll be playing against the winner of Ole Miss in Colorado, and I can't believe Deion Sanders has already gotten this team here. With about a minute left, they're in a position to take a lead, and Shadur Sanders definitely just got rocked, but I don't think it's going to matter. They're going to settle for the game-winning field goal, and I'm a little surprised at how close Ole Miss has gotten to the end zone already. They didn't have much time, but it's not going to be far enough. We will be going up against Deion Sanders, and there's no telling how this one will go. It seems like Travis Hunter's still on the team, but Dylan Edwards is hurt, and I just have to hope that they haven't fixed their offensive line. On our first drive, they forced us to a third and ten, and I can't get it out in time, so we're going to have to settle for three in what's probably going to be a shootout type game. Our defense is really good, but Shadur is a 94 overall, and this should be intercepted, but it's not. I don't understand how our corner did not make a play here, but that is not what you want to see early on, and I don't think we're going to have a first down here unless I'm able to roll around, throw a bullet, and it's going to be dropped. Well, down on the goal line, it is first and goal, and Shadur is going to break a tackle. He's playing like Superman, so it seems like we're about to go down 14 to 3, and we're going to have to score on this drive. A little play action with a comeback route should get us the first, but we need a touchdown, and I like this one-on-one -on -one coverage, but it's going to be a fumble. Pick it up. Come on. Thank you, Campbell. I don't know what Dion did to fix this defense, but I have been struggling so far, and I think our wheel route's going to get open. They only have one safety back there. Thank you, Malik Neighbors, for doing that. We should be able to simply just punch it in now with Logan Diggs, and I hate to chase points early on, but I want to get the two-pointer out of the way. I do find it kind of crazy. We haven't been able to stop Shadur Sanders and this Colorado offense yet, but maybe this is our time. Come on. King Oliver dropped that ball there, and that felt like our chance to get a stop, but maybe we'll hold them on third and goal. We're getting in pressure, and there's no way. This has been the Shadur Sanders masterclass so far, and I don't think they have the speed to keep up with our best wide receiver on this team, but we have been far too dominant throughout the entire year to potentially go into the half losing, and that was a terrible read on Brian Thomas Jr. To make matters worse, they're inside our 30 with a chance to get even more points before the half, but we get the weird sack, and I just have to have faith in this defense to continue to lock down on Shadur, but they're going to pick this one up, and in the end, we were kind of lucky to hold them to just a field goal, which is going to be just short. The fact that it was like two inches not far enough is massive for us, because now we're only going into the half down by 10, but I forgot they got ball to start the second half, which is a big problem for us. Also, there's no reason they should be completing passes like that and leaving Adam Hopkins wide open, because I'm starting to panic. We are in a position that I don't want to think about. There's less than a minute left in the third quarter, and we're trailing by three possessions, so we are going to have to start scoring quick, and I don't see anybody getting open on the slants. Throw it away. I've thought it over, and I am content with going for it on fourth down here. I think that's what we're going to need. On the slant, we're going to not catch it, and Aaron Anderson was in the area. It is time to send the house and hope that we get a safety. That is what we're going to need. Of course, they're breaking these tackles, though, and we've gotten them to a fourth and inches, but we're going to need to get the stop, and we missed the tackle on Shadar. This is just terrible. I would have never expected our defense to play this bad, but if we're going to have a chance, we need to at least get the two-point conversion, and that's going to happen. Our odds are not great, but we could recover an onside kick, and it's not going to happen on this one for us, so we're just going to have to start sending the house to stop the run. And on third and six, I wasn't expecting the pass. Our man-to-man -man coverage just got destroyed, and that's pretty much going to confirm our loss to Deion Sanders. Our freshman quarterback finally had a bad game, and sometimes in NCAA football, you just aren't meant to win. We lost to a team that made the national championship, and they definitely got hot at the right time, but against Penn State and Drew Aller, who are undefeated, they just weren't able to get it done. They're going to lose. This is one of the final plays of the game, and that will seal it. I mean, we completed our season objectives to stay on pace to win it all, and next year, I'd love to win the Heisman along with actually getting a championship. We're definitely losing a lot of talent with all of these guys graduating or going on to play in the NFL. But before we finish the rest of the rebuild, a word from today's video sponsor, Prize Picks, where you simply pick higher or lower on player projections. This week, I think Dylan Gabriel will go off against Texas because they've been letting him air it out. And I'm also going to trust Quinn Ewers to score three touchdowns. If you add more players, you can win up to 25 times your money, but I'm sticking with these two and putting in 25 to hopefully win 75. I can also get you a deposit match up to $100 on Prize Picks. So use promo code BOARD when you sign up and they'll match it up to $100 assuming you reside in one of the 31 states they're available in. Now let's get back to this LSU rebuild, and I hate to see 84 overall freshman Philip Mahone transfer out, but even after losing all this talent, I think we're going to be just fine, because I'm going to use these remaining points to get the 89 overall, and that defensive end will replace the one that just transferred out. We picked up an even better class with this one finishing number one, and the overall on all these guys aren't as high, but at least it gives us a lot of depth. How training results go is going to be very important though, and I cannot believe this team has 399 overalls. Since we're shooting for a national championship, I'm going to take all the coach points off recruiting, and Brian Kelly is now a monster with all these extra boosts. Our schedule isn't easy, but this team should be better than last year's, so with starting the year at number one, I'm expecting this team to only lose one game at most, and we're also a 99 overall across the board. The Heisman race should also be good because Drew Aller stayed back for another year, and Sam Walton's still up here. I can promise
promise you he is not going to have any success against us. And if you were curious, the number one conference in the country is still the SEC. Our first game is on the road at Clemson, and with this weather, it could be a rough one. With a minute left in the first half, I think we're going to be able to go up 14-3. But the story of this game is definitely our defense because it's even better than the one we had last year, and they've made it really difficult for Clemson to score almost any points. I mean, 13 isn't bad, but it's definitely not going to get you a win over us. And I'm so glad I redshirted Armani Goodwin. I can't trust Curtis Peters to stay healthy as our starter, so that's why we need him. And I just feel so confident going into every game. Colorado definitely humbled us, but on paper, the only team I think could be better is Penn State, so we cannot have stupid turnovers like that against Auburn. We need to win. I'd like to just cruise to the playoffs the way we did last season, except we're going to win this time. But for whatever reason, Robbie Ashford has been giving us issues, and now they're trying to bomb us, which is going to work. I don't know what it is about Auburn, but they know how to keep it close. And on the two-point conversion, they're going with another run, and we are still not able to stop the option. It's very frustrating because I feel like we're good enough to where we shouldn't even be in competitive games anymore. But I also understand that's not how football works, and we are just going to have to play our best. Going into the fourth quarter, we're going to be up seven, but it won't be for very long as they're about to score again. Robbie Ashford just continues to give us issues. They tried to send a blitz here. I think our tight end is going to be quick enough, and Hershey Thomas catches it even if he isn't. What a play from him to pretty much guarantee at least a field goal on this drive, but we're going to get more. This honestly might be one of the best throws Caleb Millard's ever had. And here on third and 16, we almost got in for the instant sack, but we still stop him. I think that's all it's going to take as the goal is for Auburn to never touch the ball again. And we're just a few first downs away from making that a reality. Curtis Peters might have broken free, but this shoelace tackle saves the Tigers for now. And I think he's great to put in at the end of the game because he will guarantee we pick stuff up. All we need is to get one more yard here and that'll seal it. He is going to fight for the first and we're staying on track to remain undefeated. Going into our game against Oklahoma, it's pouring down pretty hard, but that's not going to stop us from slinging the rock and I might as well just try to scramble with Caleb Millard if it's available and he's able to do it. Jackson Arnold has had another year to develop, so I'll be interested to see how he does. I remember last year he struggled and on a long third down, I'm going to look in Jalen Brown's direction because with that route, he was able to create so much separation. I want to say it's remarkable how we've started out, but Oklahoma's defense has been clamping. So that's why instead of it being 21 to zero right now, we're only up by seven and I'm going to get this throw out in time or I'm not. We're going to fumble the ball. It slips out of our hands in the rain and we have now got to stop him from taking it back to the house. Let's just say they were able to get their touchdown, but we're going to get one right back. And I do not enjoy playing in all these close games. I'd prefer if we could just go out and rail them instead, but it looks like they're going to end the first half tying it up if we can't make some tackles. And I can't believe they're hurrying this up. They get the sack off and they're not going to score. However, there's a flag on the play. And of course I was a bit off sides, which lets them score. That's unfortunate because now we're only going to be up by four. And I can tell that just like the Auburn game, this one is going to be a battle until the end. With a field goal, they've gotten it back within one. And on third and seven, I went with the halfback screen, which we don't get. So Oklahoma forces the defensive stop. And it's starting to dawn on me that we are not as invincible as I'd like us to be. We should be getting a stop here. This needs to be an interception. Thank you, Oliver. And let's see if we can get a return out of it as well. There's a lot of space, but you're not quick enough. So instead, we're going to have to mix in some play action. And that deep post just toasted the cornerback. This throw needs to be far enough, though. And I have never seen one put on the money that well in this game. Caleb Millard is an incredible quarterback, but Oklahoma will not go away. On third and 13, they go with a halfback draw, though, which we're going to stop. So I'm very surprised at how passively they just played that. But now we're in a position where our goal is to run out the clock, and I think we'll be able to do it. I'm going to mix in some halfback screens just to try to switch things up, and they don't go anywhere. But all that really matters is this third and six, and I knew it was man-to-man -man coverage from the start. We're going to win. That was a very hard-earned victory, but Caleb Millard got the job done, and we've finally been gifted an easier matchup. The weather isn't going to be good for it, so I guess that's how we find ourselves down by one with three minutes left on an 0-3 team, but we're still going to score some touchdowns. I refuse to lose to such a bad team at home, and since they have three timeouts left, I'll be curious to see what they do if they're not able to pick up this third and eight, which they're not gonna. I'm not sure if punting is the right option in this situation, but I'm not going to complain about it because we're going to go ahead and put in our closer, Curtis Peters, but he's not out there on the field, so that makes me think he's injured. Unfortunately, when you play on both sides of the ball, you just can't stay healthy, and with those three major injuries to 92 overall players, it makes sense why it was close, but a perfect throw here would seal the game. And did Aaron Anderson really just try to mimic Odell Beckham Jr.? That was not the time to go for that type of catch. We need this punt to pin them back, though, and it bounces into the pylon. It was so close to going out at the one-yard line, but we just couldn't get lucky in that situation. Their quarterback is going to somehow escape the pocket and truck a linebacker. So I guess I need to put some respect on Jacob Wilson's name. That was incredible from him. But of course, Harold Perkins Jr. had to get revenge. Third and eight. They have a couple slants out there on the field, but neither of them are able to get open. And we're just going to go with a cover three on fourth down. They put a little play action into it like they were ever going to run the ball and they're going to take the wrong pass. That makes us 4-0 in a game that we should have won by like 30. But we're 
we're also dealing with a lot of injuries, and Caleb Millard is at the bottom of the Heisman projections. Right now in our division in the SEC, we're tied with Texas and Texas A&M, but we have an opportunity to beat Texas here, and the only issue is it's at DKR. You can tell it's a sold-out crowd, but that'll make it even more sweet if we're able to come away with the win. But I just realized that the freshman quarterback threw this touchdown. It says that Caleb Millard will return soon with a strained forearm, and I'm going to need someone to explain to me how it's possible for Quinn Ewers to still be in college. He's turning it over, and as a seventh-year senior, you can't be making those types of mistakes, but I just don't understand how he's even in the game. Approaching halftime, I think we're about to go up 21-0. to There was just no safety help back there on Shelton Sampson, and I'd like to think that we have played this one almost perfectly. Texas has scored a couple of times, but on fourth and two, we're going to pick this one up to our running back, and they're not even trying to stop the clock, so from this point, we're going to be able to run out the rest of it. That's going to make us 5-0, and and it's nice to finally win a game by more than one possession. The SEC is so hard, though, because the tough matchups never end, and I think we've kind of owned Florida in this dynasty but there's always a chance that they could pull off the upset, especially because it's at the Swamp. It seems like we're about to go up 14-0 to though, so maybe we're going to end up blowing them out. And I know the Gators don't play well on the road, but it seems like they're also not going to play well at home. By the fourth quarter, we have a 25-point lead, and even though they're threatening to score again, I'm not too worried, because they're currently down by four possessions, and on fourth and 11, with the game on the line, they're going to throw an interception to Oliver. He was able to set a school record by getting three in one game, and this schedule is getting exhausting, but eventually, it'll have to get easier. I'm a bit worried about how this one's going to go, though, because just like the Colorado game, we are struggling early on, and this type of weather does not support our style of play, but it supports theirs. Passing the ball has not been working, so we're going to go back to running it, and that's a touchdown already. Now we've gotten them to a third and ten, and this is a wide receiver screen that's boxed. And with about two and a half minutes left, we've actually gone into a lead, but Ole Miss has the ball, and we need to pick something off. We're only up by one, so they could easily win with a field goal if we give it up, and they're in range already. So I'm starting to get worried that they're about to settle for three, but they go with the option and it is lighting us up. We just haven't had an answer for it all day and this one's going to go for about seven. So that makes this a third manageable, but I trust our defense and we are not going to get the stop. It's hard to believe we're in a situation where we could lose this game. Hopefully we can at least stop them on the two point conversion. They break the sack, but they're not going to get in. It is time to go for the win by scoring a touchdown, but we have to move quick and that was almost picked. If we don't get this fourth and three, our undefeated season is over and they knock it away. So we have fallen just like we did in the playoffs last year. And it turns out that this team's not unbeatable either. That's the beauty of college football, and at least we're still on top of our division. But I won a first round by in the playoffs, and we've fallen all the way down to number nine and number seven, depending on the poll that you look at. I'm just glad that Missouri is one and six, because this should give us a good chance to bounce back. And we're going all in, which means going for it on fourth and four, where we're easily going to convert it to Pimpton. And that's just going to set us up to take a 21 to three lead on Missouri. But to do so, we need to finish this drive off, and that's rough. They were completely prepared for the run, but we're going to see if they can stop it this time. And Armani Goodwin thankfully dove into the end zone, but I'd love if Curtis Peters was back from injury already. We're obviously still doing really well without him, but I think we would have won this game by even more, and hopefully this performance gets Caleb Millard back into the Heisman race. He's just not up here, and I find that really disappointing, because he should have won it last year, and this year his stats are slightly worse. Also, for some reason, Louisiana Tech is a top 25 team, and on paper, we're 10 times better, but that goes to show that our schedule is probably the hardest in the country, and I'm just thankful that despite it pouring down hard, we're looking to put them away early. We need to scramble in here, though, but we have no time outs and the game did not mark us for a first down. So that's going to be the end of the half because I can't get a snap off. We have been cooking SEC defenses, so there's no reason we shouldn't cook Louisiana Tech's. Aaron Anderson's a better receiver. And I just realized that if we throw up a bunch of jump balls, they probably aren't going to stop it, but they just picked off Caleb Millard, so I take it back. This team is more legit than I wanted to admit. On third and 16, though, there's no one open, and that should have been intercepted. How is he catching it, and how is he still up? This game never fails to amaze me, but this punt's already putting us in great field positioning, and could this be our first first punt return in like 10 videos, I don't think he's going to make it. But Denver Harris got close enough, and the man that's going to finish off the job is not our tight end. We had him wide open, but Caleb Miller decided to sail the throw. And you all already know that I'm going with the fake field goal. I don't think they're ready for it, and that should be caught for a touchdown. Ballsy calls like that are the reason that we're able to beat top 25 teams by this much. And this win puts our record at 8-1. and one. We're slowly climbing our way back up the AP poll, and Caleb Millard's name has appeared in the Heisman race again. But why is Drake May still in college? To our luck, we're going to meet him in the playoffs and he's going to knock us out, but we still have to make sure that we get there first. And I was not expecting this game against Western Kentucky to be this close, but it looks like we're about to score again. So that would put us up by three possessions and they are not guarding our halfbacks well out of the backfield. It is also nice to have Curtis Peters back from injury and on the field because whenever we want to run out the rest of the clock, he's our go-to guy with all of his speed and he makes it so easy to get these first downs plus a lot more. I need him to stay healthy for the playoffs though. And this one against Texas A&M decides who makes the SEC championship. Fortunately, for us, it's going to be
be here in Death Valley, but we're playing against the quarterback that won the Heisman and we're already holding them to three. This isn't a gimme for their kicker either as he sails it to the left and you know that we have to take advantage of this by having a good drive, but that blitz from the Aggies wasn't picked up so we are on second and long and I'm just going to throw it to Aaron Anderson who somehow catches it and I'm not going to question how he did it because we're about to score a touchdown. I'm going to give it to the tight end and he is moving way different. Evidently, we need to feed him more and their kicker isn't going to miss again, which got them all the momentum they needed as approaching halftime. They have a six point lead and we are looking to take it right back. But no matter what happens here, I think this one's going to come down to the wire. And what are you doing, Caleb? We cannot afford to have you fallen over like that in this position. And now you're floating it up and it's going to be intercepted. Please tell me that someone's able to make a tackle here. You cannot take this back to the house as well. All around, just a terrible way to end that quarter, but I'm determined to get us right back on the board and we are moving it down the field fast. That is going to be a laser. Our kicker somehow missed the extra point though, which keeps it at 20 to 20 and they're not going to get this first down if we can make a tackle, but that won't matter because ever since that moment, literally everything that could have gone wrong for us has, including our quarterback being out. Somehow Caleb Millard started experiencing back spasms during the game and we also had a fumble recovered and taken to the house. Now on third and five, I just need to get a stop for us to get the ball back and there was way too much time, but the running back dropped the ball. So we have been gifted an opportunity and yes, I'm going for it on fourth and 10. Aaron Anderson is faster than the safety on that side of the field. He is going to get caught though. So we can't get too excited yet. We still need to finish this drive off and the slant should do that with Adams. And I have to manually go in and kick these extra points for our kicker now. He's like a 94 overall. So there's really no excuse for him ever to miss any, but he did in Sim and we're getting the stop again, which is massive because I think we're going to have the final drive of the game. I am going to lateral it to Peters here and he's not able to break free, but we're already getting close to field goal range and Caleb Millard's going to break the sack there. That should not have happened in the first place. He is scrambling now and how on earth did he pick up this first down? Why are you doing a spin move? Go down. That was extremely chaotic, but I think it'll put us in the position we need to be to win this game. We're going to take a check down. And from there, I would rather just run out as much clock as possible. We are going to escape with a win over the number two team. And that one was a bit too close for comfort, but our final matchup of the year is against Arkansas. So it's almost like we got an extra bye week before the SEC championship. I just can't imagine this team putting up a big fight against us, but I have to give them credit and admit I was wrong because it is a close game with a few minutes left. No matter what happens here, we're going to go up by two possessions, so it doesn't really matter. But these guys had nothing to play for and they've still managed to keep it tight. No way. They did not just recover the onside kick, which gives them a chance to send this game into overtime if they score another touchdown. And this is what I get for saying it was going to be an easy matchup. This is ridiculous. The clock is ticking down, but they continue to move it down the field. This slant's going to go inside the five. And I am honestly embarrassed right now. We cannot give up a touchdown to the Razorbacks. Come on. Just five seconds left. Come on, boys. I see the slant coming across. It is all covered, but they have one more chance to reach the end zone. It is a four verticals look and we pick it off. Thank goodness for weeks. That is the game. It is over. And that was way too close at the end. We almost just lost our spot in the SEC championship, but instead we are lifting up the boot, which is a sick trophy. And if we can take down Alabama, we'll secure our first round by. Going into this, we're both 99 overall teams. And this is going to be one of the hardest games we've had to play, but that's because Jalen Milrow is still in college and he's developed. They're about to go up 14 to zero with a touchdown run. And their defense has just been locking us up. This blitz gets in almost immediately. I'm going to have to get it to Goodwin and he can't get the first down. If we don't score at least a touchdown before the half, we are going to be in a ton of trouble, but Goodwin broke this run free. And it's unfortunate that Alabama would score again, but it is far from over. I think we're going to have a wide receiver on his route. Why did he stop at mid route? Samson Jr. had his man beat. All he had to do was keep running straight, but instead he hesitated, which led to this pick. And going into the playoffs, if we play like this, we might as well just be a first round elimination again. It's taken us way too much to get into the end zone. And here on third and four, Alabama goes with the run, so we should be able to stop them. There have been multiple big plays that have gotten us right back into this game. The crossing route is open, so Jalen Brown ties it back up at 21, and we're about to find out if Jalen Milrow can handle the pressure, which he can't. This bounce is a little bit weird, but we're going to pick it up with Thompson, and he's going to fumble the ball. Somebody please get it. No, 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 no. We should not be in a position where Alabama can take the lead, and Tyler Buckner is now in trucking us, so I don't know what is happening, but on third and one, we're going to get the stop, and they're going to get three, but we could win with a touchdown. I don't think a loss here would put us out of the playoffs, but with two losses, Alabama's number 12 in the country, so there's a chance it could, and we just need to make sure that we win this game over them anyways. I'm going to leave in this entire drive because it's very important. We're going to pick up the slant right here, and I trust Caleb Millard with the game on the line, but we're going to roll around here. He hopefully needs to make this defensive end miss, and he can't get it out. To make matters worse, he is holding his knee, and that's going to put him out for at least the rest of the game. Backup quarterback, freshman Dwight White is in now, and that's a very tight window. So it is now fourth and 10. We go with a little bit of play action. The corner route's open, and he catches it. Being completely transparent, I do not trust the freshman in this scenario, but that is a dot. And how did Hershey Thomas hold on to this?
this football. I can't believe it, but we're actually moving down the field and Dwight White has the speed to almost get in. So it's going to come down to a game of inches and Goodwin is fighting. These last nine seconds are so worrisome. Jalen Milrow is going to try to make something happen, getting them in Hail Mary range. But I just have to trust the guys that we have out there, get as many people back as I can, and we should knock this down. It's not reaching the end zone, thank goodness. That was a very good SEC championship game. And I'm hoping that puts Alabama completely out of the playoffs. Caleb Millard unfortunately didn't win the Heisman, but it makes sense considering his stats got a little bit worse. And I don't even want to talk about how bad our rushing attack was. What's important is Aaron Anderson had a heck of a year and center DJ Chester won the Remington Award. We also had three different defenders win national awards as well as linebacker Harold Perkins Jr. won the butt kiss. Right end Nick Darnold the freshman won the Lombardi and King Oliver our best corner won the Thorpe. We have fought our hearts out to be able to get a first round bye and our quarterfinal opponent's going to be a Big Ten team. Trust me that also confused me for half a second when I went to say that and with 16 seconds left it looks like overtime is likely unless Oregon can get in field goal range and I was not expecting Washington to give that up but the Ducks are in a good position and their quarterback's a bit confused there. I don't know why he hesitated but their kicker is not out there on the field. They're going for the Hail Mary instead and they drop it. In overtime the Ducks would end up winning anyways but it was only because Washington's quarterback threw an interception. From what I saw I think we'll be able to take down Oregon and even though I wasn't able to win a Heisman which means I can't complete both of these goals I'll still consider it a successful rebuild if we can win a championship. This game's being played at Mercedes-Benz Superdome and it looks like we're going to score a touchdown really early on. However Oregon is wasting no time responding back and this game could very well turn into a shootout. I'd prefer if it didn't and our defense just stepped up but that is much easier said than done. On third and eight we're going to force them to dump it off and they won't get that. But what's really important is how this next drive goes and I am just going to thread the needle to Aaron Anderson. Right now Caleb Millard is 11 for 11 and he's about to improve to 12 for 12. So we have put the pressure on Oregon's offense and on this long third down they are just going to pick it up. I should have sent a blitz or something at him just to throw them off there on another third and short though and this time Ty Thompson just throws it away. I can't believe how good of a start we are getting off to. That is another touchdown and I wasn't worried about facing the Ducks but ending the first half it looks like it's just going to continue to get uglier. It's been so bad for the Ducks I think they'd be happy with getting just one stop but they still have not done that and I think Caleb Millard's going to throw for another touchdown. He literally has eight of them in a quarterfinal matchup and this game reminds me of what TCU and Georgia was a few years ago in the championship. It's nice to know that we're moving on to the semifinals and Caleb Millard must be ticked he didn't win the Heisman again. Seven seeded Notre Dame is our next victim but they're 13 and one just like us so that's a little concerning but at least we're about to find the end zone if Caleb Millard can make a play and he does with his legs. Our defense couldn't step it up but we've already moved back down into their red zone and this time we're going to roll around and find Samson Jr. for about 15 but it's also third down and I would hate to settle for a field goal so we're going to wait on the halfback angle route which got wide open. Here on third and two they're going with the run and the read option faked our entire defense out so we had our chance to get them off the field but now they've gotten inside our own 10 and on third and four we are going to drop back a ton of players hopefully we'll generate some pressure there's still three or four guys rushing and come on there's no way. In season two we had to play against superhero Shadar Sanders and this time it looks like that guy is going to be Kenny Minchie. We're not going to pick up this third down and we haven't gotten a single stop on the Notre Dame offense. That's how good they've been and they do it again. Kenny Minchie is 13 for 13 and how we respond back from that is so important. Nothing is open right now so we're going to have to try to escape the pocket. We avoid the defensive end and this is a dumb throw to make. Thankfully it's knocked down but once again Caleb Miller needs help getting up and our freshman quarterback is in the game but the real question is how long will he be out there? It looks like our star is only out for a quarter so Dwight White does not need to take care of business for too long but I would like to get the game tying touchdown here and he's quick. He actually gives us a bit more versatility on offense but of course we got unlucky with a missed extra point. We should not be down by one right now but at least we have the ball again and this time Caleb Millard is going to miss the pass. So this is a massive fourth and four, but I'm going to trust the corner route and Jalen Brown created plenty of separation. If everything goes right, we're going to score a touchdown with Curtis Peters. And now that the season's almost over, I think it's time we start to use him. His speed is what makes him so special and we're going to get the two-pointer. So LSU fans are pumped up. And on third and three, this is very risky, but I'm just going to send the house, which worked. Time is now on our side, which is a beautiful thing. Peters is going to get 10 here. And it looks like they're going to send in some blitz on us, but they ended up not doing it. So I just need to roll around with Caleb Millard. He avoided everybody's pressure very well and we find the receiver. Look at Brown go. This is going to be the final play of the third quarter inside the 10. That is exactly what you want to see. And I would be shocked if this halfback toss to the fastest player on the field didn't work. I think we've scored 21 straight to put us in this position. Notre Dame has kind of choked. And why would they ever punt the ball with three and a half minutes left? This is going to pretty much secure our win because we can run down so much more clock. This is honestly a pretty big third and nine. They went with the cover three and I'm just going to have to run around with Caleb Millard. If he has the speed to pick this up, that would be game-changing. What a play. Marcus Freeman 
and doesn't even know what to say. And we are moving on to the national championship with LSU. Brian Kelly ended up being the right hire because he's the reason we landed players like Caleb Millard. And our opponent's probably going to be undefeated Penn State. They've been so good on this dynasty file, but Boston College is going to pull off the upset. And they're locking up Heisman winner Nick Singleton. I cannot believe that they were the ones that pulled this off. But their defense has to be good to do this to Drew Aller. They are a 12 seed, but they only have one loss. And that came early on against the only ranked team on their schedule. It doesn't make much sense to me how they've won three straight, but I will gladly take an easier championship opponent, and I doubt Boston College fans ever expected to see their team in this position in one of my videos. It's a bit concerning how effortlessly they've moved the ball, but I guess Tommy Castellanos could actually be the real deal they are going to get into the end zone. Now, it didn't take us long to respond back, but we missed another extra point and they're going to score again. Or maybe not, they're going for it on fourth and one instead of taking the field goal and we hold them. I love to see the computer playing aggressive the same way I would. I think Camorian and Pipton's going to get open here. I'm glad that that was not intercepted and he's fighting for more yards. It's very important that this drive ends with a touchdown, but I'm getting sacked. And I can't believe our offensive line just let Caleb Miller get hit like that, but it's okay. We might as well just start going for two since our 95 overall kicker can't hit an extra point, but this didn't go well. And I think we just got to lean on our defense, which is going to get the sack and force a fumble, but somehow they were able to pick it up. It would have been amazing to have better field positioning, but I'm just going to try a 50-50 ball. We haven't done that in a while. Aaron Anderson won't get to it. And I'm really impressed with Boston College. They are playing us much better than I thought they would. This ball is floated perfectly to Adams though, and he gets inside the five. I still can't believe that we were able to land Caleb Millard. He was quite the gym in recruiting, but I clearly shouldn't have talked good about him. That interception has changed a lot for us, and Boston College is going to give it right back. So that is a massive deal because now we're midway through the third quarter. Millard breaks one sack, and he is going to get it out in time. I never would have imagined this game being a defensive battle, but that's the position we're in right now. We're picking up the first down now. And Caleb Millard is not known for his speed, but he has shown it off in recent games. He's going to do it on this play as well. We got a good block there and Aaron Anderson gets open. He won't make it to the end zone, but he's gotten us close enough to where we should be able to punch it in. Unfortunately, Boston College responded back pretty quickly and I think the championship's going to come down to the wire. Their defense has just been 10 times better than I thought it would be and Peters drops the ball. So we had to punt it back to them, which I hate to do and all of their players got open. I almost want to send a blitz in and see what we can do. It's a halfback screen. We were ready and in a fourth and six situation, they go with the halfback draw, but it worked out for them. That was our chance to get them off the field and take control of this game. Instead, they're going to be running for even more. And I don't know if sending this many blitzes is a good idea, but that's the game plan we are working with right now. And that sack right there is massive. It's going to make the Eagles actually settle for three instead of going for it. And I cannot believe that they are trusting their defense to stop our offense now. This is the same team that's been going for it on fourth down all day, but now they're playing a bit passive. And if we could just get one more breakaway run, we could secure the national championship. Peters is going to do that for us. And with under two minutes remaining, I think we could just take a quarterback kneel if we wanted, but we're just going to do even more damage. The LSU rebuild is officially complete, and what a run we just had to finally win it all. This is well-deserved, and hopefully LSU fans enjoyed this video, because I feel like I put together a really solid team, and if you enjoyed this video, I know for a fact that you would like this one even more.